crack the mysteries of the Earth. Discover the energy that drives a planet and builds mountains. Uncover buried treasure and see what makes mountains blow. Find out what shapes the top of the Earth and explore the secret world below with me, Nick, on the rocks. This is the Columbia River from Canada, water flowing through the deserts of eastern Washington. There's a geologic history of this river. It hasn't always been here. And rocks like these, here found 1,500 feet above the river, have a story to tell. They're the clues to prove that the Columbia River has a long, illustrious history. Eight and a half million years ago, Pacific Northwest rivers traveled much different paths. Back then, the Columbia took a 50-mile shortcut to the Pacific Ocean. The Salmon River rolled through the Tri-Cities, and the Snake River skipped Washington altogether. How do we know this? Geologists have followed a trail of breadcrumbs, river rocks, that have been used to trace the paths of ancient rivers. This is the Yakima River. Been diving for rocks here. Here's another one. This is what Yakima River rocks look like. They're round, they're smooth, they're pleasing baked potatoes, but they're dark colored. The geology upstream, the bedrock in the Cascades where this river is coming from are these kinds of rocks, dark volcanic rocks and dark metamorphic rocks. The point is, these rocks are a geologic fingerprint for the Yakima River. But more than 55 miles downriver, you will find rocks that are very different. These are Columbia River gravels, telling us that the Columbia River used to flow right through here. Heck, we're 55 miles downstream from where we were before. But these rocks look very different, don't they? These aren't the dark colored brunette rocks we had in the Yakima. These are blonde, mostly blonde colored river rocks. In fact, some of these guys have been sitting next to each other for 8 million years until this morning. These are quartzites from the Rocky Mountains. The Columbia River brought these in. Columbia River long ago, Yakima River today. Travel another 80 miles southeast and you'll be in southern Washington with Oregon right across the way. And on top of Wallula Gap, where I'm standing right now, are river rocks 800 feet above the Columbia. Geologist Steve Rydell has spent more than 50 years studying the Columbia River basalt lavas and the river rocks between them. The Horse Seven Hills started growing and rising and to its present level. So we have this amount of uplift in the last eight and a half million years. But if you look, you see the Columbia River still in its same place. So the Columbia River has been down cutting all this time through all those rocks. And like a trail of breadcrumbs, field geologists have followed a ribbon of these red and blonde river rocks all the way back to Idaho. This is a good example right here. This red rock is from the Seven Devils Mountain near Riggins, Idaho. And that's a very specific location. This could only have come to this place along the old ancestral Salmon Clearwater River. So we got a very key marker right here. Well, these rivers are older than the hills, literally. The rivers are long lived, but they're not permanent. Rivers will continue to change their course as new geology events happen down the road. 